think leasing a car is always a bad deal? You might be surprised. We're about to crunch the numbers and reveal some shocking truths about leasing versus buying that could save you thousands. Ready to challenge what you thought you knew about car ownership? Picture this. You're at the dealership, eyeing that shiny new car. The salesperson asks if you want to lease or buy. Suddenly, you freeze. Which option is better for your wallet? It's a decision that could impact your finances for years to come. But don't worry, we're about to break it down so you can make the smart move. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which option fits your lifestyle and budget. And let me tell you, the answer might not be what you expect. We're going to look at the real costs, crunch the numbers, and show you how to make the best choice for your situation. The truth is there's no one size fits all answer, but we'll give you the tools to figure it out. Leasing the allure of new cars. So you're considering leasing a car? Let's dive into what that really means. Imagine leasing as renting a car for an extended period, typically two to three years. Instead of paying for the entire vehicle, you're only covering its depreciation during the time you're driving it. It's like paying for the privilege of using the car rather than owning it outright. Now, why do people choose to lease? There are some attractive benefits that make it appealing. First off, you'll often find yourself with lower monthly payments compared to buying. This can free up more cash in your budget for other financial goals or simply give you some breathing room. Another big draw? You get to drive a new car every few years. If you're someone who loves having the latest features and technology, leasing might be right up your alley. You'll always be cruising in a relatively new vehicle with modern amenities and safety features. Maintenance costs can also be lower when you lease. Since you're driving a newer car, it's usually covered under warranty for most, if not all, of your lease term. This means you're less likely to face unexpected repair bills or costly maintenance issues. But hold on. Before you rush to sign that lease agreement, let's talk about some of the downsides. One of the biggest limitations of leasing is mileage restrictions. Most leases come with a set number of miles you can drive per year, often around 12,000 to 15,000. If you go over that limit, you could be hit with some hefty fees at the end of your lease. Speaking of fees, that's another potential pitfall. Leasing companies expect you to return the car in good condition. If there's excessive wear and tear beyond what's considered normal, you might be facing additional charges when you turn in the keys. And here's a big one. At the end of your lease, you don't own anything. All those payments you've made, they don't build equity in the vehicle. When your lease is up, you simply return the car and walk away or start the process all over again with a new lease. This brings us to an important point. Leasing can be a great option if you love driving new cars and don't mind not building ownership. It's perfect for those who enjoy having the latest models and are okay with ongoing payments as part of their transportation costs. But remember, there's always more to the story. While leasing might seem like the perfect solution for some, it's not without its complexities. In fact, there's a catch that many people overlook when they're dazzled by the allure of a brand new car every few years. We'll get to that soon, and it might just change how you view the whole lease versus buy debate. For now, let's consider who might benefit most from leasing. If you're someone who values flexibility and doesn't want to commit to a single car for the long haul, leasing could be a good fit. It's also worth considering if you use your car for business purposes as there might be tax advantages to leasing in some situations. On the flip side, if you're the type who gets attached to your vehicles or puts a lot of miles on the odometer, buying might be more up your alley. The same goes if you're looking to build long-term value or if you enjoy the feeling of ownership. Buying, the path to ownership. Now that we've explored leasing, let's shift gears and talk about buying a car. When you buy, you're essentially paying for the entire value of the vehicle, often through a loan. It's a different approach that comes with its own set of pros and cons. So what exactly happens when you buy a car? You're making an investment in an asset that you'll own outright once you've paid it off. This process usually involves taking out an auto loan, where you borrow money from a bank or credit union to purchase the vehicle. You then make monthly payments that include both the principal, the amount you borrowed, and interest. One of the biggest advantages of buying a car is that you become the owner. Once you've paid off the loan, the car is yours to do with as you please. 
This means no more monthly payments, which can be a huge relief for your budget in the long run. Another significant benefit is the absence of mileage restrictions. Remember those lease agreements that limit how far you can drive? When you own your car, you can rack up as many miles as you want without worrying about extra fees. This freedom is particularly valuable if you have a long commute or love taking road trips. Buying also offers potential long-term savings. While the initial costs and monthly payments might be higher than leasing, you're building equity in the vehicle with each payment. Once you've paid off the loan, you can continue driving the car without any monthly payments, potentially saving you thousands over the years. But let's be real, buying a car isn't all smooth roads and green lights. There are some bumps to consider. For starters, those monthly payments we mentioned, they're typically higher than lease payments for the same car. This is because you're paying for the entire value of the vehicle, not just its depreciation over a few years. Another factor to consider is maintenance costs. When you own a car, you're responsible for all repairs and maintenance after the warranty expires. As your car ages, these costs can add up, especially if you encounter major mechanical issues. Then there's the issue of depreciation. Cars lose value over time, and as an owner, you bear the full brunt of this depreciation. This can be particularly painful if you decide to sell or trade in your car after just a few years, as you might get significantly less than what you paid for it. So who might benefit most from buying a car? If you're someone who likes to keep your vehicles for a long time, buying could be the way to go. The longer you keep the car after paying it off, the more value you get from your investment. It's also a good option if you drive a lot of miles each year, or if you enjoy the idea of building equity in an asset. On the flip side, if you prefer having lower monthly payments and don't mind not owning the vehicle, leasing might be more appealing. It's all about weighing your priorities and financial situation. Here's something to think about. Buying could save you money in the long run, especially if you plan to keep the car for many years. Once you've paid off the loan, you're free from monthly payments, and every mile you drive is essentially free, minus operating costs, of course. This can lead to significant savings over time compared to continually leasing new vehicles. But here's the kicker. There's an important factor we haven't considered yet. It's a game changer that could completely shift the balance between leasing and buying. We'll dive into that shortly and it might just surprise you. The math, crunching the numbers. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty of leasing versus buying a car. We've talked about the pros and cons, but now it's time to crunch some numbers. You might be thinking, math, really? But trust me, this is where things get interesting. Let's look at a realistic scenario. Imagine you're eyeing a $30,000 car. We'll compare what happens if you lease it for two three-year terms versus buying it outright over a six-year period. This comparison will give us a clear picture of the financial impact of each option. First, let's break down the leasing costs. When you lease, you're typically looking at lower monthly payments. For our $30,000 car, you might pay around $350 per month. Over six years, that adds up to $25,200. Not bad, right? But here's the catch. At the end of those six years, you don't own anything. You've essentially paid $25,200 to rent a car for six years. Now, what about buying? When you purchase a car, your monthly payments are usually higher because you're paying for the entire value of the vehicle, not just its depreciation. For the same $30,000 car, your payments might be around $500 per month for six years. That totals $36,000 over the entire period. At first glance, this seems like a lot more than leasing, doesn't it? But wait, there's more to consider. When you buy a car, you actually own something at the end of those six years. Let's say your car is now worth $12,000. If you subtract that from the $36,000 you paid, your actual cost of ownership comes down to $24,000. So what's the bottom line? In this scenario, buying the car actually saves you about $1,200 over six years compared to leasing. Surprise? Many people are when they see these numbers laid out. But here's where it gets really interesting. Your specific situation could change everything. The numbers we just went through are based on averages and estimates. 
your actual costs could vary significantly based on factors like interest rates, down payments, and the specific terms of your lease or loan. For example, if you're able to negotiate a lower purchase price or secure a lower interest rate on your auto loan, buying could become even more advantageous. On the flip side, if you find a great lease deal with low monthly payments and minimal fees, leasing might come out ahead. Another factor to consider is how long you plan to keep the car. If you tend to drive your cars into the ground, keeping them for 10 years or more, buying becomes increasingly cost-effective over time. Once you've paid off your loan, every year you drive the car is essentially a year of free driving, minus maintenance and operating costs, of course. But what if you're someone who loves having the latest features and technology? If you prefer to switch to a new car every few years, leasing might be more appealing, despite the long-term cost difference. The value you place on driving newer vehicles could outweigh the financial benefits of buying. It's also worth considering the type of car you're interested in. Some vehicles hold their value better than others. If you're buying a car that depreciates slowly, you might end up with more equity at the end of your loan term, making buying even more attractive. Conversely, if you're looking at a car that depreciates quickly, the gap between leasing and buying narrows, making your smart move. So what's the verdict? Is leasing or buying the smarter move? Well, the truth is it depends on you. Your lifestyle, financial goals, and how long you plan to keep the car all play a role in this decision. If you love driving new cars and don't mind ongoing payments, leasing might be your best bet. But if you're looking to build equity and save in the long run, buying could be the way to go. Remember, the smartest car decision isn't always about the lowest monthly payment. It's about what fits your overall financial picture. Take a good look at your budget, consider your driving habits, and think about your long-term goals. Armed with the information from this video, you're now ready to make a choice that's right for you. The dealership won't know what hit them. Write cars in the comments section if you want more videos related to this topic. We will catch you in the next video.